Well, hello, church, uh, and anybody else watching in for these daily devotionals. I'm continuing, took the weekend off. Uh, hope you had a good weekend. Hope you're experiencing God's care for you and um, that you're able to connect with some other people, maybe in your family uh, and hopefully in the church over the weekend. Uh, but today we're continuing. We're looking at this little paragraph, James 1, verses 19 through 21, and it goes like this. Know this, my beloved brothers, let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. For the anger of man does not produce the righteousness which God requires. Therefore, put away all filthiness and, ramp and rampant wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls." And so what we have here in verses 19 and 20 is we have some really uh, helpful direction, um, really important commands for people who are spending all day, every day together in the same house or the same apartment. Okay, so that may be you, right? And so these two verses may come in really handy for us. Um, you may be experiencing over the last couple of weeks, you may be experiencing increased conflict in your home. You may be experiencing more arguing. You may be hearing or hearing out of your own mouth more grumbling and more complaining and more unkind words. Um, and so if, if that's you, you're not alone. Okay. Um, a lot of times when we're put together and we're put in pressure situations, what's inside comes out and there is conflict. That's why God's word has so much instruction and so much help for us in battling uh, this kind of thing. And so he says, be quick to hear. That's the first thing. Um, and so listen. Arguments often work like this. Both people know they're right. Both people know what they want. And the point of the argument becomes pushing how right I am, right? Uh, or how what I want is what should happen. Instead, God says, be sure to start um, to be quick, not just to express what you want or your opinion, but be quick to hear what the other person's saying. Uh, have a humble heart that's trying to understand, trying to learn. Uh, so be quick to hear, be slow to speak. Um, and so God wants us to ask ourselves before we say things, is this helpful? Is this loving? Is this going to build up? Is this going to contribute to the peace in our relationship and in the home? Is this going to encourage the other person? And you may say, well, that's, that, that's a really hard standard, right? That all of my speech build up and encourage, and yeah, it is. I, I, I know it's a really hard standard, um, and it's hard for us to do. It's hard for me to do. And that's why this command here in verse 19 is helpful for us. That's why we should be slow to speak. Because it's hard to have words that are consistently positive and helpful. So we should be slow to talk so we have time to think about what we're saying and be slow to anger. Um, pay attention to what's in our hearts so that we're not speaking out of frustration or anger. Um, why? Well, for, it says, right, verse 24, the anger of man does not produce the righteousness that God requires. And several years ago, I heard Pastor Rick Brady, who was here at the time, teach on this verse, and he just had a really helpful point. I think it was in a men's meeting. Um, this is an especially helpful verse for parents, right? Because um, you may be in kind of intensive like parenting boot camp right now, right? And so you're with the kids all the time, and, and there's a lot of parenting that needs to happen. Um, and you're, you're maybe wanting to produce... A certain behavior and and so we have all kinds of tools in our tool belt that we can use and God's telling us here the anger that tool the anger of man does not produce the righteousness which God requires and so let's be careful and let's just um, ask God to help us not use anger uh, and not to resort to anger to try to get the desired behavior out of our kids and God says, that's, that's not, you're, you're not going to get what you think. It's, it's not going to be productive if we t turn to anger to produce things in ourselves or in others. 
Um, and then verse 21, he basically gives us a key uh, to being able to pull off in increasing measure the commands were given in verses 19 and 20. And the key is basically put off, you know, all wickedness, you know, rampant wickedness, um, and and put on something. So to try, if you see sin growing up in your heart and your words, try repent of it, confess it to God, ask God to help you put it away. But then you put on something, and what you put on is 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 this: receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. So basically. Um, we can't just try, but we need to be humbly taking in God's word, humbly listening to God, humbly letting God speak to us and expose us and, and teach us and train us and shape us and encourage us and give his grace to us and give his promises to us and fill us with joy in him. Uh, George Mueller said that one of the biggest keys for him in living a godly life, George Mueller was a a man who was a ministry leader and, uh, and led many orphanages in England in the 1800s, he said a main key was that he started each morning by trying to make sure his heart was happy in the Lord. And he would do that through meekly receiving the Word of God, by being in the Word and letting God's love saturate his mind so that his heart was happy in the Lord. Um, and so we're a couple weeks into this quarantine thing. And um, probably a lot of us have just been kind of doing uh, things, maybe just surviving. And let me just encourage us, including me, we need to we need to create a habit, if we don't have it already, of spending time listening to God, receiving humbly God's word, not just doing, uh, not just reading the news. Um, so let me encourage you, start the day with God's word. Maybe memorize portions of God's word. We need God's grace. We need God's help. Um, we need his heart shaping word. And so that's, that's what we're being encouraged to in this passage today. Um, so that's, that's James 1, 19 through 21. Tomorrow we'll look at verses 22 through 25 about what to do with God's word when we do hear it, when we do receive it. And um, just a couple pastoral words. First, uh, it looks like all indications point to that we're going to be in this kind of situation for another month in terms of not being able to gather together as a church, uh, not being able to, to kind of meet in the same order from the CDC federal government and probably same orders from the governor. We don't know for sure, but it looks like April is going to be uh, kind of like the last two weeks have been in terms of uh, where we're able to go and stuff. And so, of course, we've shifted. We're two, going to two services on hold. We're praying that soon we'll be able to go to one service. And, uh, and so we need endurance. And so I'm praying for you. I'm praying you will not grow discouraged. Uh, I'm praying that you will not um, despair, God, um, and that God will help you, and that God will encourage you, and you'll find joy in the Lord day by day over this next month. Also, let's keep connecting. Uh, I know it takes effort. I know maybe there's not that much to talk about when you do connect. Let's keep connecting. Uh, come to the prayer service online Wednesday evening. Let's keep praying. Um, and let's keep encouraging each other. And let's keep reaching out. We need endurance. God will give it to us. And then we need to keep caring for each other. Um, as always, call the church office. Uh, email me or email office at fellowshiplife.church if you need anything. Uh, if you need prayer and uh, we love you, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.